Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Through him we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask for his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading is taken from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let my ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness within you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch him for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with him the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from the letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. This child is the light to light enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to John, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. 
rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had yet not come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who, who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, and his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, 
and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I'm going to talk about zombies, land rovers, comic book heroes, and lockdowns. And I may even throw in a bit of Christian theology just for fun. In today's Gospel reading, we hear of Jesus bringing back to life his good friend Lazarus. Lazarus, who had been dead for four days and locked away in a tomb. Jesus was upset that he couldn't have been there earlier to heal him before he died. He was so upset that he displayed a very human response. Jesus wept. Jesus was not just human. He was divine at the same time and so was able to do something that we cannot do. He brought Lazarus back to life. But let us consider what that actually meant for Lazarus. Lazarus, who had been dead long enough, said there was a stench. He was not in a good way. So did Jesus raise a movie like Zombie back to life? The word zombie goes back less than a hundred years and was used in films for even less time. We know what a zombie is. It's a reanimated corpse, corpse. Generally free from social convention and subject to strange desires. The other thing about zombies is that they are incomplete and reanimated at the point of decay that is representative of the decay that follows a human death. So what about Lazarus? Was he brought back to life, stinking of four days' decay in a hot country? And if he was, it can't be much fun for him. He would have been incomplete. He would have been shunned by everyone. He would have been persecuted by the Jewish leaders as a sign of Christ's divine nature. And if Lazarus was suffering from a terminal illness in the first place, would this have gone away? Or would he have to suffer all over again and eventually give up the ghost a second time? Maybe this type of resurrection wouldn't have been ideal. Or did Jesus restore him to a body that was better than the original? I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago in the heady days when spring was in the air and lockdown was far away. We were talking about Land Rovers, in particular a Land Rover that is older than I am, and yes, there are such things. And being the font of all knowledge, we talked about the colour of the original Land Rovers being the colour of the interior of military aircraft cockpits, because the only colour that was available was the surplus paint from the Second World War. Anyway, the conversation got round to gearboxes and rebuilding gearboxes and how much it would cost for a top of the range rebuild. And we got talking about how engineering has changed since the times that the first Land Rovers were built. Tolerances on machine tools nowadays are a quantum leap away from the 1950s. So if you get a, a rebuilt gearbox now, it is better than when it left the factory all those years ago. In fact, if you restore a Land Rover today, it will be so much better than the ones that were built in post-war Britain. You actually get something that will last longer than the original already has. And the original was never designed to be as long-lasting as they have been. So did Jesus build a Land Rover version of Lazarus? Better than the version that succumbed to the illness and died at what we can only assume was an early age. Did Jesus fix the bits of the human body that are frail and weak? 
did we end up with the superhuman Lazarus? Faster, higher, stronger. We remember the promise that Jesus made to all of us when we commit the dead to God at funerals. We say that we commit them to God in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body. So we can assume that this was an option for Christ, this earthly resurrection. So what would happen to Lazarus as this superhuman? Again, the leaders of the Jews would be after him. They can't have followers of the Christ figure being seen to be better than mere Jews. And how would Lazarus live his life? With superhuman attributes, but human nature. If we look at the Marvel and DC comic world, there has been explorations of the frailty of superheroes and their dark side. Superman, Batman, Captain America, and all of the all-American superheroes. They all suffer from a dark side of their given superior powers. How would Lazarus cope with his newfound powers? Would he use them for good or for evil? Would the temptations of human frailty prove stronger than the good that Christ had preached? And that Lazarus would be very aware of? Or would some Lazarus be somewhere between a zombie and a superman, just like we are? We have superhuman powers through our relationship with Christ. We also have the ability to behave like zombies due to our flawed human nature. We have seen that during the coronavirus crisis, how people have behaved. The zombies who have emptied the shelves in supermarkets to the detriment of others. I was in the supermarket the other week when a pallet of toilet rolls arrived on the shop floor. I was amazed at the number of toilet rolls that some people think they needed. But we've also seen the superheroes of the crisis. The workers in the NHS who were not able to self-isolate. The shop workers who were not able to self-isolate. The carers who were not able to self-isolate. And there are the superheroes who have volunteered to help those that are not able to get out and do their shopping or pick up their medication. There are those whose superhero attributes and no more than picking up a phone for a chat to someone who is feeling isolated, socially, as well as physically. During this lockdown, we are being called to be superheroes. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells us that when we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, or visit the sick and or imprisoned, we do this for Christ. We have the chance to do this now. We have a chance to be the Christians that Christ calls us to be. And not only has he called us to be like this, he has given us the superpowers that enable us to do this. For we are all empowered by the Holy Spirit to be the superhero followers of Christ that will make people aware of our power. Christ's love for us. So during these strange times, let us be the Christians that we are called to be. Let us feed the hungry. Remember the food bank when we shop. Let us remember that our neighbours when we shop. Let us welcome the stranger, the neighbour who we may not know, but is part of our community. Let us virtually visit the sick and imprisoned. Make a phone call to a neighbour who is housebound and let them know that they are loved by us as well as Christ. But there is something else that we can do. We can look to the resurrection of our community at the end of this temporary crisis. 
we have the chance to keep this momentum going and to build something better than it was. We can build on what we are doing today. We can make our communities a better place through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us be the superheroes that Christ would have us be. Let us be the superheroes that Christ deserves. Let us be the superheroes that our birth through our baptisms have promised us. Let us go and be superheroes and make changes in our society. affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we pray for your church in these troubled times when congregations can no longer meet together to worship you in unity. Be with us in our homes as we become the church divided but united in your love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world, for all those in lockdown, all those where their medical services cannot meet the demands that are being placed upon them. We pray for all leaders. They have the strength and the courage to put the steps that are necessary to prevent the escalation of this virus. And we pray for our own leaders. locally and nationally. May they take the right steps to protect us all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that we come out of this crisis with a renewed hope of peace, that we can work together as one world in love and harmony. We pray for all of those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. In silent prayer we bring before you those who we hold dear in our hearts. In your mercy. We 
pray for all of those who have died, through the virus and through other causes. We pray for their families and all those who mourn, those who cannot attend funerals because of isolation rules, and those who miss the chance to say goodbye. We pray for the souls of the recently departed, Rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves. We pray that you send the Holy Spirit on us to be with us, to empower us, to give us the strength to act out Christ's will. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son, these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, and that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world, and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith.
so Father called to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Andrew and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all. You gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ gives you grace to grow in holiness 
to deny yourself, take up the cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord.